Okay, um, for example four, graph the hyperbola x plus 1 squared over 8 minus y minus 2 squared over 8 equals 1, includes center, vertices, foci, and asymptotes. Once again, I've got my standard form already written for me. I can see it's a hyperbola. If I didn't see the words graph the hyperbola, I see the standard form of hyperbola. I got an x squared object minus a y squared object equals 1. So again, either x squared minus y squared or y squared minus x squared is going to create a hyperbola every time. And since... This time my x minus, or sorry, x plus 1 squared over 8 is the positive term. That's positive, that's negative. That tells me it's going to be a left-right hyperbola. All right? And again, that's only necessary to worry about when I'm actually putting it to graph. All right? But again, it's going to be left-right, so my hyperbola is going to be here with the vertices and foci horizontal. My slant asymptotes are still slanting. So here we go. First off, what is the center? Negative 1, comma 2. All right, and just be careful of order. Again, H is always with X, K is always with Y, and the signs are always opposite, right? So, and again, with the, both the ellipse and the hyperbola, I guess hyperbola more, the order happens differently. So this is X first, Y second, H, K. This was Y second, X first, H, K. So be careful that you find H with X, K with Y. It doesn't matter what's in front, what's in back. And the signs are always wrong. So H is negative 1, K is positive 2. All right. So that's my center. Um, what does a squared equal? Eight. eight. So a is equal to the square root of eight, which is about 2.83. What does b squared equal? Eight. eight as well. So b is also equal to 2.83. All right. Yeah, get decimal approximations for these. Don't feel like you have to um, put like a square root of something. So it's much easier to count in decimal form than it is to count in square root form. <clears throat> Okay. Just so happens A and B are the same number, that's fine. They can be the same, they can be different, doesn't matter for hyperbola. All right. Finally, I know C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. A squared is 8, B squared is 8, so C squared is 8 plus 8, so C squared is equal to 16, which means C is equal to 4. And the final thing I need to know is my slopes of asymptotes. Again, it's plus or minus B over A. Well, B is 2.83, A is also 2.83. That's equal to plus or minus 1 over 1. You, you can leave it 2.83 over 2.83 as well. It doesn't matter. 1 over 1 is just as good. The other problem of 2 over 2.24 wasn't you know, easily reduced to some friendly number, but 1 over 1 is pretty easy to deal with. So I might go down to reduce that like that. <clears throat> So that's everything I need to get from the standard form. I need my center, I need what A, B, and C are, and I need the slopes of asymptotes. Once I have all that information, first thing is my center. I'm going to plot negative 1, 2. Okay, everything's coming off of that point. I've established this is a left-right hyperbola, so I'm going to go left and right A and left and right C. These will give me my vertices, and these will give me my foci. Again, I'm going left and right, so A matters. If I'm going up and down, B matters, all right, as far as how far I'm going to go. So I'm going to go 2.83 to the right and 2.83 to the left of my center. For my vertices, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right for a, vert, for a focus and 1, 2, 3, 4 left for a focus, again, from my center. So again, once I've established this left right, I'm going to get five points in a horizontal line. If I establish up down, I'm going to get five points in a vertical line. 2.83 right, 2.83 left, 4 right, 4 left, because that's what A and C are. Next, I'm going to graph the asymptotes, slopes of asymptotes, plus or minus 1 over 1, again, off of the center. So if my center is here, if I go 1 over 1, that's up 1, right 1. I can get several points if I want to. You can get as many as you want. If I go negative 1 over 1, that's negative 1 positive one, so we're going down one, right one. Again, you get as many points as you want. We connect those with dashed lines. So there's a dashed line there. There's a dashed line there. Typically in graphing world, if you graph a dashed line, that means that it's a boundary of some sort. It's not part of the actual graph, but it's just setting up some sort of an imaginary boundary. And then the final step is to connect the hyperbola Again, it's going to go through the vertex, and it's going to be near the asymptote. So it's going to be here, like so, and on this side, like 
So. Yeah, make sure you go through the vertex, not the focus. If you look at a good hyperbola, you should see a focus being wrapped around like that, wrapped around the graph. All right. If you're here and the, that's behind, that's not a good look. So again, the graph should always wrap around the focus if you direct graph it.